Talk about banking confidence now. The fourth quarter banking confidence index is out. And in the Joburg studio to discuss it with us is Emilio Pera, lead financial services director at Ernst & Young. Emilio, welcome to the show. I've just got this um, report in front of me now and it says the following. It says banking index remains strong despite weak economy. Now, it just seems to me that the banking sector is almost like um, the situation that's playing out in the world markets at the moment. World markets doing extremely well. Equities, that is. Risk assets doing extremely well against a backdrop of a very, very strong slow global macroeconomic environment. The same situation seems to prevail in South Africa with banks. Bad economics, but good banking. I, I suppose, as you mentioned in the introduction, um, you have to look at the, the underlying factors and components of, of the, the survey. Um, the overall confidence levels remain high, but that is also in the context of a very low confidence levels that we've seen over the last couple of years. Um, since 2011, we've seen a, a steady improvement um, in confidence levels, and in the current year, it has remained stable. We had a bit of a, a blip in, in the second quarter, uh, but if, if you go down and look at the, the details, there is some concerns developing uh, around the, the, the underlying uh, components uh, making up the, the confidence level. Let's take a closer look at uh, the components making up this index because there are discrepancies between the two if you're looking at retail banking and then your investment banking side of things. Yes, absolutely. If, if, if we can start with, uh, with retail banking, we, we're seeing uh, impairment levels starting to, to tick up. Um, Partly because of that um, tightening of, of credit standards, that has an impact on um, the, the income. Um, so we've seen a, a pressure on, on the, the growth. So still in a growing environment, but, but uh, more pressure on, on that. Mm -hmm. And then um, something that we've seen across investment banks and um, retail banks is uh, a slight reduction in employment levels um, on, on both sides. Um, and in retail banking, that is for the first time since the third quarter of 2011. Um, maybe on the investment banking side, uh, a similar pressure on, on, on um, income growth, uh, but we, we don't see the uptick in impairment levels, although um, the demand for credit uh, is definitely um, much lower. Emilio, have we gone full circle when it comes to impairments at the, at the retail level, at the consumer level? Because I imagine that after the financial crisis, um, impairments were on an upward trend. But then as people, as banks reined in their lending practices and people became a little bit more circumspect about how much they wanted to borrow, I would imagine impairments went down. But you're suggesting that they're ticking up again. Have we come full circle? I suppose we, we have to consider um, in the last year we've seen um, a significant growth in unsecured lending. Uh, so it might be that the banks are starting to, to slightly pull back in that regard. At the same time, um, the mortgage lending book, um, the, the housing market hasn't fully recovered. And, and I suppose that more lending did come through during the year, but, but banks might be taking stock at the moment, given the fact that the overall economy, the growth has slow, slowed down uh, towards the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, you know, we've got uh, uh, Basel III to contend with as well uh, moving forward. Yes, that deadline to meet uh, all of those requirements uh, put out a little bit. Uh, to what extent has that impacted on confidence levels within the banking industry as well? Um, a lot of work has been done uh, for the banks uh, in preparing for, for the implementation of Basel. And as you say, with um, the, the timelines that moved out, um, I think it's just um, a bit of a reprieve rather than um, that uh, the banks won't continue to, to, um, uh, to yeah. effort, put in efforts to, to get there. But I think in that regard, in the short term, I don't think a, a direct impact. But in time, um, it will definitely, um, because of the, the cost of, of complying, um, might have an impact. But the timeline is quite far out. So I suppose where we stand at the moment, I don't believe a significant impact. Mm -hmm. Emilia, sorry to backtrack, that's one of the perils of me being in, 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 in Cape Town and not being able to interrupt you in Joburg. You, you say corporate demand for investment banking services remains weak. In your experience, is that weakness an indicator of um, further macroeconomic woes? Because if people aren't doing business and don't need investment banks to do that business for them, that suggests to me that there isn't business to be done or that businessmen are not confident. Has that been the case in your experience? Uh, we, we've definitely seen in, in looking at, at uh, confidence levels overall for investment banking and um, investment banking is the one component that has reduced slightly in confidence over the last quarter. Definitely more susceptible to um, global shocks, so uncertainty in, in global markets, but also um, 
um, uh, locally where, uh, from an industry perspective, uh, economic perspective, there's concerns. We've definitely seen a more direct impact on, on confidence levels um, in the investment banking environment. If we're looking at uh, you know the, some of the statement here, I mean, for investment banks, income growth rose somewhat despite weaker business volume. So explain that and you know how that's actually come, come through. Uh, very good question. I, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I <laughs> it is an interesting anomaly, and, and it could just be that uh, the, the fee income, as an example, though on lower volumes, um, larger fees uh, were generated. Um, yeah. uh, unfortunately, we don't have that. Okay, so no clarity assess. there. I mean, uh, when it comes to uh, you know back on the retail side of things, if we're looking at their uh, the state of things, both interest and fee income growth uh, slowed in the last quarter of uh, 2012. They're really putting the pressure on uh, retail banks to now think very creatively of revenue streams moving forward. Uh, just how creative uh, are banks having to become? Um, absolutely, and, and I think in, in um, what we've seen in the last year with um, unsecured lending, obviously fee, fee income was a, a, a key driver and we saw significant increase on, on the fee side um, for the retail banks as they um, tightening the, the credit standards um, that, that will definitely put pressure on that. And I suppose it is to become more innovative and, and we have seen a lot of innovation, especially in the retail um, market over the last um, uh, year or two. Um, so definitely more uh, innovative think thinking. And I suppose if you look at um, banks like African Bank announcing that they are exploring to expand their offering into other products um, as well. So, so definitely the banks have to go back to the drawing board and, and just uh, look at the, the income flows that they currently have and how ca they can expand on that. Emilio, I think there'll be a lot of fund managers watching the, this with a great deal of interest and in going through your report once they've, uh, once they've um, heard what you've got to say because it seems to me that when you say retail banks sharply increase the tightening of credit, then that has, that has profound implications uh, for the retail sector of the JSE because if people have got less credit, they spend less money. I mean, it's a very obvious, um, it's a very obvious uh, sort of knock-on effect and, and also for, that, for the housing market. So from what I can gather from, from what you've said in the last uh, few minutes, both on the corporate side and the retail side, there are some real headwinds um, uh, for consumers, for companies and the South African economy in general. I suppose we have seen um, that tightening and, and um, loosening of, of credit standards over the, over the last two, three years um, through, through the credit crisis. Um, I think the, the trading environment is tough and, and uh, obviously banks have to look at their whole portfolio and as they tighten um, they have to, will reassess um, in the new year. You have to look at the survey in the context of a specific quarter and, and have to look through the cycle. And, and what we've seen um, in trends, and as I mentioned earlier, in looking at the retail confidence, it has been quite stable over the, over, over the last year. So you can't look at each quarter in isolation. It, it is probably to, to look through uh, the cycle and see what the trends are as far as the survey is concerned. Moving through to 2013, your outlook for the year ahead? Um, I, I suppose... Um, a lot of uh, what we've been talking about is probably uh, also due to uh, a slowing growth in the economy and, and which has a direct impact um, and I suppose uh, the banks uh, are impacted through that so in, in, in the media term we, we uh, probably see a similar um, situation but I suppose it depends on how 2013 unfolds.